Hi all, welcome back to a new post today and today let's discuss about something very new and that's about the first India-Central Asia Joint Working Group on Afghanistan. Now Afghanistan is an important neighbour for India and also a very important participant of the neighbourhood first policy of India. India has always been a time threat tested threat for Afghanistan, especially in the aftermath of the Taliban takeover, whether providing humanitarian aid to the Afghan people or also during the COVID period. India has participated in various development projects in Afghanistan. So let's look at what actually transpired in the first India Central Asia Joint Working Group on Afghanistan in New Delhi. Now, the first India Central Asia summit was held way back into June, in Jan 2022, and this was the first summit hosted by Narendra Modi, our Prime Minister, in a virtual format. And during this first summit, uh, they agreed to take some important steps, and one step was the formation of the India Central Asia Joint Working Group on Afghanistan. So the summit was attended at that time by Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Kyrgyzstan. So India sees the Central Asia as a very, very important partner in its foreign affairs and also extended neighborhood policy, as well as the import, they are important partners with India on the Shanghai Cooperation Organization as well. At the summit uh, in 2022, way back in Narendra Modi, our Prime Minister laid the roadmap for the next 30 years and also emphasized to meet continuously with the Central Asian countries every two years. And now the next India Central Asia summit will be held in 2024. At the meeting, they also uh, emphasized on closer coordination and consultation on Afghanistan and decided to establish a joint working group on the country at the senior officers level. Now, the first meeting of the India-Central Asia Joint Working Group on Afghanistan was held in New Delhi. So, the meeting was now attended by the special envoys and senior officials of India, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. The officials of also the United Nations Office of Drugs and Crimes with whom India is coordinating closely to, to, tra tap, uh, to, uh, to deal with illegal drug trafficking, especially after the ta Taliban has taken over and its fallout on India especially. India is also dealing with the United Nations uh, World Food Programme, so they officials were also invited for the India-Central Asia for Joint Working Group on Afghanistan. Now, let me tell you that it was in February 2020 that the US and Taliban had signed an agreement for US to withdraw the troops from Afghanistan and in the aftermath, after the fall of the civilian government, the Taliban took over and it's continuing with its reign over Afghanistan. So large parts of the uh, Afghanistan are under its control and there is no civil, civilian government as yet. So the situation has deteriorated, especially with regard to economy and most importantly, humanitarian. Now, India, in the aftermath, uh, during the period of the withdrawal of the US troops, there were many talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban. So previously, India never participated in these talks between whenever the party was Taliban especially. But over a period of time, India has changed its stance and India supported the talks between the Afghan people, that is the civilian government and the Taliban. And this signaled a shift in Delhi's approach towards the Afghan crisis at that time itself. Even during the Heart of Asia conference in Tajikistan, India was supportive of all the efforts to accelerate a dialogue between Afghan government and Taliban. And this was a rare reference to the insurgent group. So India has always been critical of the Taliban because of its terrorist practices. In 1990s and 2000, India was opposed to any dealings with Taliban, but its position seemed to have changed all over the years. And in 2018, when Russia hosted the talks between the Afghan government and Taliban, that's before the taking over of Taliban uh, in Afghanistan, India sent its diplomatic envoys to Moscow. In September 2020, during the intra-Afghan dialogue in Doha, our own Minister of External Affairs, Mr. Jay Shankar, was pre present at the inaugural session and uh, it, they reaffirmed the long-standing position of the peace process in Afghanistan which India described as Afghan-led, Afghan-owned and Afghan-controlled. So China now has reached out to the Taliban, Russia has also hosted talks and Europe in powers have also showed interest in sponsoring talks. India now has also become more flexible and adaptable to the new changing reality, especially with regard to geopolitical situation and especially with regard to security in the neighborhood and now has, uh, has uh, led the first India-Central Asia joint working group meeting on Afghanistan. 
So India has cultivated long deep ties with Afghanistan people especially and the government and as its uh, investments are many in many pr in for important projects like education, power, irrigation, infrastructure development and most recently the Shantu Dam in Kabul as well. Also during COVID, India was the first to extend its help with, uh, help with regard to medicines and aid with regard to Afghan people. So what does it mean when we say that we want when the when the powers when the world when these speaking uh, countries that is India and the Central Asia say that they want peace in Afghanistan. Now it means that uh, a system which is defined by core values related to human rights especially women rights democracy rule of law rather than the rule of terror and political inclusion. So the civilian people have to be a part of the government. This is what is being stressed by all the countries and also India as well. So what was the discussion on during this India Central Asia first joint working group? Let's have a quick review of this now. So during this meeting, the, uh, the special envoys exchanged views on the current situation in Afghanistan, including political security and humanitarian situation as well. They also emphasize a respect for sovereignty, unity, territorial integrity and non-interference in the internal affairs and they reiterated the support for a peaceful, secure and a stable Afghanistan. They emphasize the importance of an inclusive government, a representative political structure which includes not only the Taliban but also a majority of the civilian people and mostly even women as well. And respects of all the Afghans, especially the rights of women, girls and the members of minority including the most important access to education which has been totally cut off for now. So the racial threats of terrorism, extremism, radicalization and most important drug trafficking which is having a spillover effect especially to Pakistan and India and is the most important way for garnering of resources for the terrorists were discussed and the possibilities to coordinate its efforts on counter countering these threats were also considered. They emphasized that the territory of Afghanistan should not be used for sheltering, training or planning of any finance uh, terrorist attacks and also reaffirm that no terrorist organizations including those that are uh, designated by the United Nations Security Council resolution of 1267 should be provided sanctuary or allowed to be used by the territory in Afghanistan. Now the country representative of the United Nations World Food Program briefed the participants about how India was coordinating with the United Nations World Food Program in delivering food grade assistance to the people and also made a presentation on the current situation. And immediately India announced an aid of 20,000 million tons of wheat assistance through the Chabahar port to Afghans in partnership with the United Nations World Food Programme. Now it also took note of the current humanitarian situation and continued agreed to continue to provide humanitarian assistance to the Afghan people. Also as I told you that the officials of the United Nations Office on Drug and Crimes were also a part of the India Central Asia First Joint Working Group meeting. It also uh, emphasized, they also emphasized on the fighting the threat of or the menace of narcotics especially. And let me tell you that India is providing capacity building training and also the know-how uh, with regard to humanitarian aid for those people which are addicted to drugs and also the, the drug user population in the country and also providing the intelligence and also the security training etc. to crack on illegal drug uh, trafficking especially. So India offered capacity building training courses not only for the United Nations Office of Drug and Crimes but also the stakeholder partnership countries of the Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, Akwa. Uh, Uzbekistan who are participating in this dialogue to help them in the field of illegal drug trafficking because even they are being affected by this. The participants finally thanked India for organizing the first joint working group on Afghanistan and this comes at a time when India is organizing the Raisina security group which is modeled on the Munich security conference and where they are discussing the various security challenges that are being affected world over and also at a time when the world over is focusing on Russia and Ukraine war which is not calling an end until now so somewhere the afghan issue has been buried down with the most of the noticing going to the russia and ukraine war and so i think it is a very correct and apt time to focus on the afghan issue and actually what's going on there and to encourage a dialogue between the civilian and the taliban so that there is respect of uh, rights and also rule of law and most importantly restoration of democracy in the country so i hope this content was really helpful to you all and if you did like please do like share and subscribe and do comment and tell me um, about uh, how you like the posts as well. I shall see you in my next post and until then as usual it's always happy learning.